Are you ready to step into the world of top hats, waistcoats and moustaches? Join me, Dominic Skinner, as I guide you through the steps to replicate the charm of a true Victorian gentleman. For men, one of the most important and busiest shops of the Victorian period was the barbershop. In the 1800s, grooming trends weren't always purely aesthetic. They were also shaped by what people thought a healthy male body should look like, as well as other health concerns of that period. I'm going to tell you about some of these historical grooming trends while recreating a classic Victorian look with the help of a few things inspired by the Cult of Beauty exhibition here at Welcome Collection. On to the moustache. I'm gonna style mine to look like Thomas Hardy's, the English novelist and poet who, fun fact, is actually a great, great uncle of mine. Family resemblance? He had a few varieties of moustache styles in his lifetime, but I'm gonna go for the classic twisted curl. I'm really enjoying that it's almost straight out. Oh, I like that style. There we go. Another popular moustache style at the time was inspired by the last German emperor, Wilhelm II. This style was created by his royal court hairdresser, Francois Hayden, who also made the popular tonic called Es ist Erheit. According to instructions, first you moisten your moustache with the product. So I'm just gonna push some into the front and just pull it through to the tip, like so. Then, once you've strapped your moustache trainer on, you slip the comb underneath and brush the hair sideways, and then upwards so you get a nice flick at the edges. Then, you remove the comb from the top. You would wear the moustache trainer for a period of time to shape it for the rest of the day, but mine is already quite trained, so off it comes. I've gone for twizzled ends here, but a lot of men at the time would have had luxurious, thick moustaches that would have covered their entire upper lip. During this period, some people believed that moustaches helped to filter out dirt, dust and smoke from the air that they were breathing. Back then, most major UK cities were heavily polluted, so having a personalised filtration system on your upper lip would have been a no-brainer. To help me nail this Victorian look, as you can probably tell, I'm using some help, starting with this beard. Now, if I wanted to grow a beard like this, I'd probably have to start back in the Victorian era. So instead, I'm using a ready-made one. At the time, you might have attached a fake beard using mechanical whiskers, a contraption made of wires and springs, and was designed to stop your fake facial hair from flying off in the wind. If you didn't want to wear a beard wig, you might have resorted to using a product like Cronutria, which helps promote facial hair growth. Their adverts promised Thousands who were once utterly destitute of beards and whiskers now have those attributes of manhood. However, some of these types of products smelt foul and were even potentially poisonous. Oof. So, while you might have finished your treatment with a full face of hair, you probably wouldn't have been very popular with your stinky, toxic beard. As for beard care, it was super important that Victorian beards were kept frequently washed, trimmed and combed. Whisker brushing in particular was important in order to get rid of any bits of small food that became trapped in the undergrowth. <sighs> Victorian grooming is thirsty work, so excuse me while I take a tea break. <sighs> now, I wouldn't want to ruin my grooming work, so obviously I'm using a teacup with a moustache guard. Victorian ingenuity. For men, having hair was crucial to appearing healthy and strong. And towards the end of the Victorian era, people thought, better pretend that you have hair than be hairless. Pretend for a second that this is my real head of hair. How would I have looked after it if I was in the Victorian era? Health was actually one of the reasons why many people started wearing wigs in the first place. Wigs experienced a resurgence in the 1900s, but they first became popular 300 years prior in the 1600s. They were initially embraced by the upper classes as a way to show off that you could afford a wig, to get rid of lice, and occasionally people would use wigs to hide the symptoms of syphilis. 
Back then, syphilis was rampant. It caused people to develop scabs, rashes, lesions, and also hair loss. So, if people could afford it, they would sometimes hide these symptoms by wearing big, voluminous wigs. As a final touch, citrus, lavender, and woody scents were very popular with the dapper Victorian gentlemen. So, I'm just gonna slap on a little bit of this essential oil mix. Mmm, and boy, does it smell good. And now to pair with the perfect accessories. And that concludes our guide to grooming for a Victorian gentleman. Guys, guys, can I take this off now? Guys.